Okay, so this part now naturally leads us to fun, fun functions, all right? So let's talk about that. All right, so what we have done so far has been really cool. We figured out how to draw a square and we figured out how to write it as a Python script so when we run it, it all runs at the same time instead of running it here one by one. We also learned about variables and strings. So in here, uh, the thing that's a variable is my turtle, right? And then we keep using that variable over and over again. Let me ask you a simple question. In this program right here, is there a single string that we're using anywhere? Yes or no, what do you think? Three, two, one, mm. There isn't any strings that we're using here, okay? What we are using here are integers and integers are just uh, whole numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So you have negative, you could have 100, 90, but if you have 90.2, that's not your, um, that's not an integer, right? That's something else, which we will discuss. But at, up to this point, I think that we are, uh, this naturally leads us to functions. So let's talk about that. Notice that when this part of the code runs, what it does, right? This part of the code, I want you to just kind of memorize it for now. You're not gonna really understand what it means until we get to object-oriented programming. But I want you to just focus on this part and what does this part do? So let me just simply run the code and let's see what that part does once we run it. And it goes and it draws a square, right? So this part of the code draws the square. Okay, that's cool. What if we wanted to make, um, uh, whenever we want to make a square, right? It seems like we would have to copy this code and write it again. So for example, let's say my turtle dot forward uh, 100 and let's see what happens. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run it. Okay, so I'm gonna move it forward. And now I'm gonna try to like draw another square. So I'm just gonna copy paste that code. Oh, cool, it kinda looks like glasses or something, right? So let's go back. So this is a square. And this part is a square, right? So every time we have to draw a square, we have to copy this whole bunch of code and write it again and again every time. Well, think about this. When we had, back when we were using variables, did we have to remember all of these numbers? No, we just stored it in X. So I'm gonna teach you guys a trick where you can take this entire block of code and kind of give it a name, like a variable name almost. But it's a little bit different and when you assign something to a block of code, uh, it's called, a, it, it puts it in a, you put it in a function, okay? So here, it's all gonna make sense. So I'm gonna remove this uh, up at the top. Oh, uh, quick thing, just in case you guys don't know what this is. This is called a comment, okay? Anything that you write with a hashtag in front of it, you're telling Python to ignore that part, okay? I, I don't want you guys to get confused by that, okay? So for example, if I write hi here, it'll just ignore it. But if I write hi here, it'll give me like an error or something. So hashtag means I'm putting a comment and it's only for humans to read. So now let's turn it into a function. So I'm gonna say def, that means like define, and we're gonna define some function. So what does this thing do? It draws a square, right? So I think it would maybe make sense if we call this function a square. And whenever you create a function, you have to put open close parentheses after it, just like that, and put a colon, okay? And now everything that you want part, uh, everything that you want to make part of that function, you have to indent it. So what I'm gonna do is go here, hit tab, go here, hit tab, go here, hit tab, whoops. 
And then uh, you can also just highlight that part of the code that you want to move and just hit tab all at once. Okay, it'll move it for you. Now let's see what happens when we run this code. So I'm using the shortcut to run the code. Hmm, that's weird. It's not really moving anywhere, right? Think to yourself, why is that happening? Okay, let me tell you this. If I wanted um, Bob or let's say X to be this number, right? And I want it to make X spit out that number, right? Print that number out to the screen. Well, if I define X to be something, that's not the part that does the spitting out. That's just me defining what X is, right? But the part that does the spitting out is when I actually say X and hit enter and it does something. So if I do banana is, uh, you know, yellow, then if I want to say the yellow part, right, I would actually have to say banana and then it spits out yellow. Just like that, me defining a function doesn't call the function, doesn't actually use the function. So I actually have to call the function or use the function to make it do something and make it, you know, uh, like spit it out pretty much. So here, I'm gonna say square, okay? So like, if you were born and somebody gave you, gave you the name Jimmy, that's them giving you a name. They're not calling you Jimmy, they're not telling you to come over Jimmy, they're just giving you a name, attaching that label onto you. Then later when they want to call you, they go, hey Jimmy, and you're like, what's up, right? They're like, Jimmy, come here. And then you respond to them, okay? So just like that, we gave this function a name, square, and here we're calling it. So now let's see what happens. So I'm going to run this. Look at that, right? It made a square. Well, what does that mean? What if we wanted to do that same thing where we move forward 100 and we wanted to make another square. So let's say I put this line, move forward 100, and then I want to make another square. How would I make another square? Should I copy all this code and then paste it right here? No. The trick is that I just call that function again that makes a square, right? So let me run it. Okay, how cool is that? So why do we create functions? Hopefully it's clear to you. Um, we create a function so we can just reuse that code over and over again without having to write all of that stuff again and again and again, okay? Uh, to make it a little bit uh, cooler, another thing I'll show you about functions in the next video is how we can give arguments to functions, okay, or parameters. So. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.